Hi, my name is Braden Cochran, and I would like to first of all thank the four people that actually showed up tonight. Before I get into anything else, what you're about to watch does have some swearing in here, and I'll throw that out as a disclaimer so that it doesn't catch anyone off guard. Again. Anyways, this documentary is the combination of eight months of work that three other guys and myself have put together. After a long summer of getting up in the mornings with these guys, sometimes spending more time on a football field than I actually did when I played football, I feel like this whole documentary wraps up everything into a nice little package. With the filming and organization of these videos, I truly couldn't have made a video each week and put out the photos I was actually hired for without the help of Brady, Levi, and Zeke. I can't thank them enough for all of the time that they gave up to help me record some dudes throwing around a football on Friday nights. Even though the video says Braden Cochran Media, I really could not have done it without these guys helping out. There's a reason I wrote this script, and it was specifically because I knew I would ramble on if I didn't. So with that being said, and after getting everything else out of the way, I'm pleased to finally present my documentary, The Voyage. The Waverly Vikings sweep the Northwest Vikings here in the season. Your final score, Waverly 59, Northwest 13. Here in round one of the Class B playoffs, they'll go on to face Bennington in the second round. And that will bring the season to a close for Grand Island Northwest. We'll step aside for just a quick moment. We'll give you a short post-game recap, and then we will say goodbye. Please, perhaps I have such special needs. I wondered what was wrong with me. My friends are false. Pussies. Call the first one savage, mow my mood. That's what it was. 2016, we was running around, beating niggas up in the You ready for my three, two, one? Yep. Three, two, one. Okay. What is your name and Ooh. position? Kevin Stein, head football coach for the Grand Island Northwest Vikings. My name is Austin Payne, and I played quarterback. My name is Peyton Atwood. I am a kicker and punter. I'm Victor Isley, and I play defensive end. My name is Cooper Garrett. I'm a defensive end and left tackle. Hold on. Do you want me to name both of my positions? Yeah. Okay. Tegan Limka, wide receiver and defensive back. My name's EJ Aarons, and I'm a safety and wide receiver. Uh, my name is Camden Jensen, and I play quarterback. You know, uh, we prepared through the, through the summer, you know, kind of like we always have in the past. You know, we, uh, we really hit it hard right at the very beginning. That first um, probably two weeks, you know, right after that Memorial Day, we really kind of hit it hard, that's when we do our, what we call our Viking installation camp, then we have our jamboree, you know, so we really, we really grind through it right away from that first about 10 days, uh, and then, uh, and then we just kind of get into the, the, the group of kind of weights, and then uh, sometimes, and then in, when we hit Thursdays, or sorry, in, um, in July, in July we'll start to kind of bring some guys in in the evenings and maybe do some like seven on sevens and stuff like that with them. I would train a lot at George Park. I would, you know, work out every day. Every day after work, I would uh, go outside and hit trees or like run around and just stay conditioned and stay in good shape for the season. So during the summer, we had, um, you know, morning weights. And then stuff I did outside was I did a bunch of football camps, um, just working on my technique and, uh, you know, got I got back to a lot of basics this summer, um, just, Throwing mechanics, you know, working on being able to throw the ball deeper, um, more effective, uh, just things like that. Man, I don't know. Just act like we're having a conversation. Man, I lifted them weights, ho. <laughs> <laughs> you know, during the summer, we really like prepare for the season through weightlifting. We did a lot of that, and then we also had miniature practices after our weightlifting sessions. That definitely helped get us prepared and mentally prepared for the season and the upcoming jamboree.
Uh, the Jamboree was great. Um, I felt like as a team we had a very successful Jamboree. Uh, the Jamboree was big because, you know, it gives you early competition early in the summer. Uh, it kind of gives you a base of where you're at and where your team's at going into the rest of the summer. Uh, definitely just getting like back into the hitting of football, the grinding of football, just that type of stuff. Um, the Jamboree really helped this season just kind of set the tone for what we expected our season to be like. You know, we just came out and did how we took business as usual and did what we normally do and just played ball. All right, so the, the Jamboree helped us a lot. Uh, we got a new coach, uh, Coach Carter. He came from uh, Gish. He was our defensive coordinator uh, and then came here to be our safeties coach this year, which he made a really big impact on me and all the other players on defense to, you know, get stuff going and help our uh, old linebacker coach move to defensive coordinator, Coach Inetic. So those two really bashed together and did really good to make us all you know, learn from our mistakes really early and find out our strengths and weaknesses from the start. So we get, get pretty good for the season. Yeah, you know, we were rolling, you know, our, our injuries, we, we, were, we were rolling right through preseason real good, you know, and I felt really good about where we were at. And then all of a sudden, uh, right about our jamboree time, you know, when we, you know, losing Brock was a big one, then we lose Zach, you know, for, for some time. And so those were, and then, it, then, we, then after that, it, uh, you know, it kind of just stayed with some, with some little nicks and stuff like that. But those are two guys that really kind of uh, threw us in a, in a loop, you know. Um, and we, we had to kind of get her some, some, some stuff figured out because those are guys we were counting on. And uh, so, yeah, it, it, did hurt, it did hurt us. Uh, and it all kind of happened right at once. Three games specifically I'm looking forward to. Aurora, obviously, everyone. Everyone loves to play Aurora. They're a rivalry. Uh, it's going to really set the tone for the season. And then Scott and Scott's Bluff, two very tough teams. And I think if we can beat those teams, that'd be super cool. What was the mindset going into Aurora? Oh, you know, everybody's mindset is it's Aurora at the end of the day. You know, you want to beat Aurora. Uh, everybody was, you know, jazzed. I feel like the fans were jazzed. I felt like, you know, their fans were jazzed. It's opening week of another football season, and it's our biggest rivalry. So it was, you know, the hype around the game was super real. Going, in, going to the Aurora game, it was a lot of ups and downs. We, I mean, we don't, I mean, we hate them. Putting it politely, we don't like them. They, uh, they've been our rivals for the last however many years, but really big rivals the last like four years. It was just always wanting to come out and kick the shit out of Aurora. Uh, you know, every year we just want to beat the hell out of them. Um, it's Aurora. Uh, we got, don't like any of them. It was just going in there week one, practicing as hard as we could, no mistakes, if not very little, and then going out there and playing our hardest and coming out and doing our thing. Um, I guess our mindset for Aurora was just to get the hammer back, kind of a big statement week one rivalry game. Um, it would have just set like the tone for the season if we beat them. You know, I think uh, our guys were a little bit too uh, too geeked up for it, you know. So they were they were really excited, you know, going out on the road, you know, feeling good about where we're at, you know, knowing they're going to be good. It's going to be a good, real good tester for us. And then, and then um, when we did a play very well right out of the gates, you know, we kind of it really just shocked us to our core, and um, we didn't respond very well for it. So I would say our mindset was awesome, but it's almost too good. We we're too amped up that that end up kind of hurting us. Uh, in the long run.
tear in the fabric of life. Northwest, 14. So, after Aurora, as everybody knows, you know, Aurora didn't necessarily go the way we wanted it to. But um, I think a big thing that we, uh, you know, as a team changed from Aurora to Scott is like, we got to go. You know, like in week one, you know, it's week one of the new football season. We kind of got, you know, destroyed in that. And so we really needed to flip a mindset of we're playing football now. And I think our show on the field compared, uh, from Aurora to Scott was a big, big show of that, that we needed to be a lot better. No, I think we started to kind of, when we, that Scott game, we kind of started to settle into our own a little bit. You know, we had some of those guys that uh, hadn't started before, you know, finally got some reps. Um, 
I think we felt confident going into there. Uh, you know, had a, we played very well defensively. You know, played well offensively. It was a good ball game all the way through. Had a chance to win it right there at the very end. Uh, I think that's our our one game that probably. Uh, you know, Austin Payne finally started to find his groove. You know, he threw the ball really well. Uh, you know, found some open receivers. You know, we, we started to, to run it pretty good. Um, so, uh, and, and like I said, defensively, we were night and day different uh, from the Aurora game to the Scott game. So we started to kind of finally kind of figure out who we were. I feel like the, um, that change really helped us in a way from going, starting out 0-3, you know, not coming together as a team at all. Um, but that Seward week really helped us mentally and physically because we knew, we knew we could beat them, but the end result didn't really help us at all. But um, yeah, going into practice all those days, uh, we were mentally prepared and ready to go. Looking back, I mean, we were kind of defeated, you know, like we were so close to being this really good team. Like, Scott's always been like a pro prolific team that we've had to play against that are usually really hard to beat. And to come that close, a touchdown, was kind of demoralizing from that fact and also playing Aurora before and losing to them. But I feel like going into Seward, we reset on Monday and just went out and played our game.
I remember this. So after Seward, um, we were very, not sad, we were kind of like mad and angry and very hyped up to like play the next game and win and beat them because um, we got robbed for the Seward game. Obviously that one play um, with the um, force interception, pick six from Isaac. Um, bad call by the ref, so we got robbed. And after that happened, we were just, you know, completely motivated more to just to prove everybody wrong and beat them. Um, the tone shift was really downhill. We all were just kind of like, crap, we're 0-3. And, three. and um, we all just thought like that sewer game was just BS and didn't go our way. But a lot of the players, like I guess you could say the ones that didn't play much, uh, really just thought down on us, just said we we're going to lose every game now, we're going to lose. And as Stein said, um, he, he didn't like the way we started. And we definitely could have won at least two of those three games. I mean, like, yeah, it sucked. You know, going 0-3, we're like, oh, we, we suck, maybe. But I think, like, one of the bigger things that we were able to overcome was that we weren't going to give up. You know, we're 0-3, who cares? It's behind us. We got a whole season ahead of us and we're gonna play hard no matter what. You know, in the locker room, I felt like we were still fine, even starting 0-3. You know, we had a lot of players turning backs on each other, talking back, you know, not listening to the coaches or when anyone else is trying to make them better or any of that. It, it kind of tore the team apart a little and coaches noticed that and got on us pretty good about it. You know, I thought, we finally hit a sense of um, a little bit of anger, a little bit, you know, um, like, wow, we did, we just, we were awful against Aurora, against a really good team, and we played awful against a team we wanted to beat, you know. Uh, we feel like we let, uh, you know, Scott kind of off the hook. When you, when you double him up on yards, uh, you know, we, we, we were kind of angry about that. And then um, after just a travesty that uh, the Seward game got took from us, uh, our dudes were just angry. And then we come out, don't play very well right out of the gates against uh, Elk, Elk North, you know. So we, we played with an edge, with, with an anger, uh, like, like we have s something to prove. We have something to do. Um, it just, I, I would say our mindset was angry. Northwest with 45 seconds left. Here's Austin Payne, QB keeper, right up the gut. Touchdown, Vikings! Austin Payne rolls that boat all the way home!
Oh, that was that was awesome. That was definitely a top two, you know, best moment of the year right there because it it, it kind of felt like it got us over, you know, the bar. You know, everyone they were three and zero, we were zero and three. Everyone was this this game's Elk North. You know, this game is all Elk North, and you know the way we were able to battle back into that game. It was a total team thing, but I, you know, I just happened to score that last touchdown. But it was you know an amazing feeling getting that first win and scoring that touchdown. How did the team feel as a whole after getting our first win of the season going into the Scots Park? Like a giant gorilla was took off our back, you know. Um, you know, they were a real good team. We, we felt, uh, you know, we built, you know, we, we were 0-3, they were 3-0. and You know, we beat a real good team. We, you know, we're, we're still on the road. We have that little bit of excitement about, uh, you know, our field's going to be getting finished sometime. Um, so, uh, it really just gave us a huge pep in our step, you know, coming to practice. Oh, we were we were really hyped because even our fans, like our student section, started doubting us because they all thought we were just gonna lose every game. But we finally rallied up and won that game as like a team. I think it was kind of just like that monkey off our back. You know, we finally got that win, and it was a huge comeback win against. And nobody thought we were gonna win that game. You know, so it was just a lot of fun to be like be the underdog and beat a team. It just felt like, you know, the first couple games was nothing went our way. Just Elk North, it felt like we things were starting to change to where we were getting calls, we were getting, we we're scoring points, we were kicking ass, we were putting things together and putting people in places they need to be, and it was starting to all click together. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, would you please stand, remove cover for the national anthem. We knew we were um, going up against a great team, and, and, and again, we're on the road again. Um, you know, man, we played we played real well. You know, it was, it was very similar to the uh, the Scut game. You know, um, we knew we were going to either win or lose by seven points, and that's exactly where we're at. You know, it's another game where we kind of felt like we left let them off the hook uh, a little bit, um, but I think it's still. Our, still our mindset was like, hey, we're, we're going to be okay. We're going to get into the playoffs, and we can play with anybody in the playoffs. So our, our, our vision was still long-term, not short-term. Oh, the flower was badass. 
I mean, I saw planes and stuff going, and I was like, you know, it'd be kind of cool if they did that for the national anthem. And when they actually did it, I was like, oh my God. And I was like, it hyped me up. I was ready to go. That was pretty cool. I, I've only seen that at like Nebraska games, but uh, yeah, that was, that was super cool and really good experience. Um, I thought it was really dope. It was kind of sentimental because my grandparents were vets, so it was like kind of hit home, but in the end, it was pretty cool. The flyover was sweet. I wish we could do something like that, and I know, I mean, it's a big ask, but it was something you don't ever see, especially in high school football. It was, I mean, we didn't expect it. We didn't know it was coming, and then you just see two big old jets flying over your head over the national anthem. It was, it was a sight to see, and it was super cool. So after that Hastings game, I felt like that was, you know, another turning point. Uh, we had the Scotts Bluff game right there. We were up seven at half. Um, they just, you know, got the best of us in the second half. So that Hastings game was a huge statement game for us because, uh, again, we needed it. Uh, we were one and four. And, you know, it was a part of the season where, you know, we knew we had to take advantage of. And, you know, when we did it against Hastings, everybody knew, you know, the next couple games were very winnable, and um, the Hastings one was a big, big win to start that momentum. Yeah, I feel like that week, you know, knowing they just got the field done and knowing it'd be our first home game of the year on the new field and everything, I feel like we all had that little energy that, you know, we got to get this win, and it'll be a really good push for us for the playoffs and knowing that it'll be a really fun game. I mean... In general, we were very confident 
because even though we knew people doubted us, um, we knew that we were a good team, a good football team. So we just, we kind of just knew who we were at this point of the season. We just played really hard and played to our best, our best, um, and we played our best basically. Um, yeah, we, we knew who we were and we just played hard and we just kept going and kept trying to, you know, win and win and prove everybody wrong and do better. Uh, it was one of my first games, so it was pretty nerve wracking, but as I played more throughout the year, it gets a little bit easier and because I just trust my guys more and I know what they can do. Uh, my name is Matt Fritchie and I'm the athletic director and one of the assistant principals. Um, so, so first of all, it, it's uh, the first hurdle that we faced was just fundraising, just raising enough money so that we could begin the project. And, uh, and then after that, um, you know, the challenges w weren't our challenges as much as they were our construction company's challenges in trying to secure goods and make sure that we had turf and, and develop a timeline and, and those pieces. And then what decision went into where our home games went into? That was a lot of work. Um, we, uh, I talked with Coach Stein. I talked with uh, Dr. Edwards. Um, we tried to we tried to secure um, to secure a facility that would would give us an optimal time to play and be a reasonable distance away. Um, and so the first week we played at Hastings because it was a 30 minute drive and it's a beautiful facility and we were able to play at 7 p.m. The second week, whenever we had uh, whenever they had a game at 7 p.m. and so did St. Paul and, and Central City and all the other nice fields around. Um, we decided to go ahead and, and ask Gish if we could play prior to the GICC game. And the reason we had to play prior was GICC has contracted with them for years, so they had first dibs on time. So, so I, the official completion date was something, if I remember right, was supposed to be somewhere around October 4th. We were hoping for a little bit earlier than that, but, uh, but the, the, de the delays kind of happened just just in scheduling. I don't think they ever promised a certain date other than we would play on it this year. And so the, the two home games that we got were a blessing. Absolutely, you know, after going for those first five games that were just grinders, you know, uh, you know, going down and just taking care of business against probably our second biggest rivalry in Hastings, you know, was big. Um, having that home field and um, was, uh, there's just a little special buzz, you know, kind of going around through the school, around our, around our guys. Uh, they were ready to go, um, ready to wear, you know, our, our black on black, you know, for a real home game. So there was a, a big buzz for that. The energy, oh my God, it was insane. You know, first time playing in that new field, it was energetic. I was hyped to play. Like the day before, I was just like shaking almost. I was so excited to get on this new field. And then just once it finally happened, it was a feeling that I can't describe. You know, it's just almost out of body. I would say, you know, you know, besides the playoffs, that had to have been the most fired up the team had been. Uh, shoot, we were told the field was supposed to be here in August, then September, and it finally got here in October. And the feelings were just amazing. We knew, you know, the crowd was great. Um, you know, the fireworks, it was just, it was just a blast. And, Having that home field helped a ton, I feel like, and it was super cool to be home. Timmy Trumpet to start things off here tonight as the lights blink now at Viking Field to get everybody juiced up. I got the Willies, Tyson. <laughs> you do. I got the Willies. I'm on the sideline right next to the big amplifiers and blasting out Timmy Trumpet. I'm looking over at the shipyard. They're fired up. The guys in the huddle are fired up. The sideline, you got Kevin Stein bobbing his head to the music. He's ready to go. Let's go. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. 
and then just once it finally happened, it was a feeling that I can't describe. You know, it's just almost out of body. Um, okay, after gearing, um, was there any sign of letting up after Lexington whatsoever? Not a chance. Uh, no. Um, no, there was no sign of letting up. No. No. tone going into York was a lot more like playoff-like. Um, there's a different feeling when you go into playoffs of, of you know, lose or you go home. And, you know, there's just not a lot of love lost between Northwest and York. And, and going on, you know, back on the road, we felt comfortable with that. Um, I think, I believe that we kind of took, 
we didn't take York as serious as we should, and that's hence why we were why we were down, you know, at halftime, and had to dig ourselves out. Uh, but there was a there was a definitely a different tone going into that York game. There is 100% a tone shift. I mean, we knew going into the beginning of the season that Gehring and Lexington were kind of going to be our off games. You know, I mean, they're not the best, so we could get a little bit of a break, focus on our stuff, and knew going into York it was going to be like. Right after Lexington, we knew it was like huge because we would have got that second or like that in the first bracket instead of being in the second bracket. And that really probably would have affected us better through the playoffs. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Um, the guys knew how important that York game was. You know, that York game was something that you definitely, it was a, it was a night you could not take off. And, um, you know, people were just motivated. Like I felt the locker room from the first string to the you know the fifth string wanted to be there because everybody knew how important that game was and you know the vibes and the you know in the locker room were great before the game last game of the year we knew if we won that game we'd have a home game first round of playoffs so we kind of knew we wanted to beat them really bad and uh, it's always a really good game we came out there and came down the last minute and kind of got us Let's go!
this is after York. Shit. I might start crying. All right. What were your feelings after the missed field goal? After the missed field goal, I felt like ass. <laughs> Putting it politely, I just... I wish I could have it back, but I mean, thinking about it and look, thinking about it and looking back at film, I just, I don't think there was a whole lot I could have done differently or changed about it. I mean, watching it, my foot just never, it never stuck. It just went straight through and right on my ass. So, but uh, yeah, it sucked. I wanted to, I wanted to have it back more than anything, considering that would have been my longest at the time for a career and for the team and going into overtime and beat York, which is always a big uh, big uh, goal for Northwest is beating York, because yuck fork. The way we all came back as a team was just rally and say we have at least one more game every time, and we have nothing to lose. We're lower seed going into there, and just play like we normally do. You know, I mean, I think we were just so pissed off about York that we were like, Dude, we can go however far we want. We got nothing to lose at this point. We're the 13th seed. We should be the fourth seed, you know? So we wanted to kick it like Elkhorn's ass. So at first, after we lost to York, you know, as being the quarterback, being the leader, you know, I, I, was, I was honestly a little down on the ride home from York. You know, they told us we were playing Elkhorn, and I was like, gosh, like Elkhorn's going to be good. And, I, you know, I'm not going to lie, I had doubts um, on the bus ride home from York about, you know, the playoffs just because, you know, when you lose a game how we did to York, uh, you don't know how people are going to re uh, respond. But that next Monday at practice, at film, like, people caught me, caught me by surprise, to be honest. They were ready to go, and we were ready to go get a win. So it was, it was super cool. You know, we were like, uh, we, we kind of came together because we kind of rallied around. You know, we, we started out as road warriors, you know. It, it wouldn't it be... Uh, fitting for us to almost play at home, you know, in the playoffs, even though we kind of wanted to, it kind of jokingly, um, we're like, hey, let's just, let's just, you know, go on the, go on the road and, and, and make a run through the playoffs. So I think our mindset kind of uh, went uh, kind of the riverboat gambler, like, hey, let's just, let's just let it, let it loose. Let's let just let it go. And, you know, we're, we're going to be an underdog no matter where we go. So let's, uh, let's embrace that underdog rule.
going into the kick at the Elkhorn game, there was nothing I wanted to change. I, that's what I've been told. That's what I've been taught is to keep it the same. Consistency with your steps and everything like that is more important than the actual kick. Yeah, it's just when, you know, they always say icing the kicker in the NFL is a big, uh, big problem. And when uh, Elkhorn uh, supposedly, or they, when they called that timeout to ice me, I actually think it helped me more than anything. I mean, it gave me another like minute just to step back, take a breath, you know, just think about it and just relax my whole body. And then I just felt more confident and comfortable after that timeout than I did before. Next up, just a little bit more, please. Peyton Atwood, the senior, trying to take the lead for Northwest. A 41-yard field goal with 10 seconds remaining. Atwood puts his foot into it, spinning towards the uprights. It is through! It is good! A season long! Peyton Atwood drills it! 41 yards with 6 seconds remaining! How about... The sweetest taste ever, redemption. So it was uh, third down and four, third and five. Coach Stein calls the play, and I'm like, we're scoring. I told, I told myself, I'm like, we have to score, and we're going to score however we have to. And, you know, it happened that, you know, they read the play well. Joe was covered, but that's what I told myself. You got to go, and uh, that's what I did. Joe, uh, you know, he laid a great block. And I just told myself I wasn't going down, and it, that was that's probably the top moment. Now that I say it out loud, was scoring that game time touchdown was just very surreal because it was it was kind of our our moment that we've been waiting for all season long. It seemed like, and uh, doing it against an amazing team like Elkhorn, it was special. Was the team ready for Waverly? I thought we felt we, we, we were in a good position to. I, I really do. I think our guys, you know, felt great for it. Um, and, you know, we were really, you know, in that ball game, even though as ugly as it was, you know, our defense kind of kept us in the ball game until um, we had to, you know, go for it late. But uh, I felt like we were, we were ready to go for that game. I think we, we had that feeling that, that we, could, we could play with these guys, but we also knew that they were, they were definitely a top eight team as we were. So, we're going to have to play well. Sing us a song 
ourselves a king, a swan there, such a chill, such a chill. I, it was during the, the fourth quarter, um, during the fourth quarter, I think it was a play when um, the guy, man, okay, during the fourth quarter, it was, just, it was a play where the running back ran, um, was on the right side and was running down the ball and I, I was chasing after him. I was trying my best with, with the hurt leg. I was trying my best to chase, chase after him and stop him. And uh, I barely, I barely miss him. And he scores a touchdown. And then that's where I kind of knew, like, okay, our season's like probably over. And uh, they've already scored a ton of points, and we've only scored like one, I believe. So that's when I kind of knew our season was over. Uh, it kind of hit me that high school was over when. It was about third quarter, and it was like 23 to 7. And we just weren't really getting anything going. And then Austin got injured, and Cam went in, and you know, he's not very experienced, so he doesn't have the kind of mentality like, oh, I'm, I'm the man. I'm going to do you know, what I'm supposed to do. And so we never really got anything going. And they just kept driving on us, and we had injuries like EJ and Chase get injured. And so we had some backups that never really played, like Ryan Kelly. And so they were kind of inexperienced and didn't know where their, their fits were. And so they just kept kind of attacking there and kind of our weak point. And then they ended up scoring again. And it was like, crap, it's, it's over. Um, I tweaked my name about five minutes left in the fourth quarter. So I'm kind of like hobbling. I'm like, dude, I want to finish this game. It's my last game of my high school season. Uh, Coach Murr took me out, and I just started balling on the sideline. I mean, I just, it was at that point that I knew it was over. So, it was that third and long, I want to say, maybe towards the uh, beginning of the fourth, end of the third, kind of. Uh, we were still down 11 points, but, you know, we were, we were fighting our tails off, and hats off to Waverly. They were an amazing football team. But when I got injured, uh, Eli went down. Brock, you know, was fighting through some stuff. Harb was fighting through some stuff. I was like, like I, I didn't lose faith, but I was like, man, this, like, this could definitely be it. Like we're, you know, we're we're about to be done with high school football. And when I got hurt, I saw how everybody reacted to me getting hurt, how people reacted to EJ getting hurt. I was like, yeah, this is probably it. And, and you know, that's super sad to say, but you know, we we fought our tails off, and you know, that's all you can ask for. Probably the end of the 
game for me was when I got that interception and then I came down on my ankle around is a, it was a season ending injury that kind of hit me hard. Uh, right when it happened, I knew it was over for me. So uh, it, was, it was really tough, but I know I put my all into it. Yeah, Waverly game, it was, it wasn't good. I mean, we, a lot of downs, had a lot of calls going the wrong way. Just couldn't put points on the board, kind of just struggled all around. And then once about that halfway through the third quarter, it kind of just starting to set into where it's, this is, that was our season. That was our senior season. That was, and I mean, we still fought and we tried. I mean, we've, like I said, we haven't had anything go our way pretty much all game long. And then, but once about, like I said, halfway through the third, about the start of the fourth quarter, it was, I mean, it just kind of felt like it was over and ready to head home. Was there a different intensity in this game compared to the other games you played? Uh, yeah, there was a different intensity in that Waverly game because we were down 16, seven rounds in, and if we score there, then the game's pretty close, and that's a sick round, and if we advanced there, that would have been the farthest we've been in a while, and yeah, it was just pretty, pretty intense, yeah. And this is kind of a bigger question. Do you feel like you are ready to lead the team next year? Oh uh, yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm ready, and because I know my guys and we're all hungry after that Waverly loss. We want to get back out there and beat Aurora. And then this is, this is the tough one. Can you take everything from the past questions thinking about the season now and sum it up all in one sentence? Damn. All right, I got it. All right, so. Overall, the season, you know, coming in last year was a, we lost a lot of seniors, you know. We had a lot of young guys step up. So um, this year, going on three at the beginning and then getting that fire back and beating Elkhorn North that really put an enthusiasm in the team. And a lot of young guys stepped up, so we had a lot of leaders this year. And uh, throughout the year, we kept getting better and better. And sometimes the results didn't work, but when they did, we, we're really excited about it, and we finished really strong, and I'm proud of that. Season in one sentence was, to me, would just be, it was a game of ups and downs. It was highs, lows. I mean, there was so much that could have happened and should have happened and we wish would happen, but just couldn't get things to fall our way. And I mean, we still competed, but couldn't get the things we needed to happen to happen. <sighs> doubted. All year, I would say we were doubted. Um, you know, the Aurora game happened, and people were like, that's a C1 team. You know, a Class B team should not be, you know, beat like that by a C1 team. And uh, this team fought, and, you know, we proved people wrong all year. Road Warriors from the beginning. Uh, it started out as a mess. The season was kind of a mess since we didn't have a field. But in the end, when we got the field, um, it really showed our true character as a team and how we can compete with anybody. We were better than what everybody thought we were to be. That's my sentence. Yeah. Okay. This is it. This is the last chance that we have, you know? This is the last time I'm playing with my guys. I've played with them since middle school, almost elementary school. And it's just all coming to an end. This is my last ride, last chance with the guys that I, I really enjoy. And so I'm gonna give it all I got. I don't know if I can make it in one, but I might be able to make it in a couple. It was the excitement leading into the season because we felt that we were going to have a nice team with the excitement of getting a new field, then to the little bit of disappointment that we didn't have it done as soon as possible, 
back to the excitement of having it and then ending the season just like we should, you know, on the road in a, in a tight ball game. And any final thoughts, any advice from classmen, anything else? You know, I think the biggest thing that I've, our underclassmen could take anything from our seniors going out was they were a class that really got along, that really pulled for each other. They, they enjoyed playing with each other more than they enjoyed playing themselves. Uh, they were a group that just really, they were, they were selfless in what they, in what they do. You can, when you kind of start thinking about you know, the guys, I don't want to name all of them because I'd miss some of them. They enjoyed being with their, with, their, with, their, with their buddies, with their dudes. They enjoyed just having fun with them, being excited you know, for them. And they were true, you know, selfless you know, kind of guys. And there were some times that they, were, that they got you know, egotistical because and, and, they needed to play in a brash format. But for the most part, they enjoyed playing with each other. Yeah, for your underclassmen, I would just never give up. It's, I mean, I started football my freshman year. I started as a backup to Parker Janke. It was not fun just sitting at practice, not really doing anything. But, I mean, you never know when your time's going to be. When you're going to be called up from the sideline to go play, it's, I mean, things happen. It's football. People get hurt. Things happen. I mean, you never know. So just, you know, keep grinding. Keep, keep hitting the weights hard. Keep Keep pushing through, even know when it sucks. Morning conditionings through the summer, just don't give up and keep going. I'd just say for the underclassmen, just don't let up. Prove that you are something for the team and that you'll benefit them in any way, shape, or form. For the underclassmen, cherish it. Cherish every moment that you have with your guys. Love it, enjoy it, work hard through the grind because you're going to miss it. I already do, and I've been a couple months removed. Advice for underclassmen, give it your best, give it your all. You have four years. It goes by extremely fast. I remember, I remember me being a freshman and now I'm a senior. So, yeah, just take, take it slow. Give it your all, give it your best, give it your, all of your heart. And, uh, yeah. Some advice that I'd give the underclassmen would be, you know, Work hard in the off season, you know, do your own thing. Don't try to be like anyone else, you know. You gotta push yourself to be the best. And no matter if it's getting on someone for not doing the right thing or making someone better, it's, it's all about effort and love for the game. You know, for the underclassmen, be hungry. You know, be hungry for next year because uh, we left a lot of unfinished business on the table for, uh, for you guys to go. and take care of and I think Northwest football will be just fine. The fucking pack off of the porch or break a pound down. Get the scrap if it happened to blow it makes a round sounds. Pussy cat on my lap, push it back and go to town down. Putting rap on my back and I'm black and snatching crowns. I they came back around like a nigga selling cracking pounds. I got a bag now, but it's nothing to brag about. Gun blast in the background. I'm a black man with the bloodhounds. Mac 10 making love sounds to a bad chick. She from uptown, I'm from down south. Not a loud mouth, we could fuck around. Hit the music, baby, cut it down. Hit the doobie while you do me and doobie. I feel like I'm a bust. Now. I feel like a bust down when I shine bright blind niggas is up now in the cut big black truck pack sacked up you can pick it up now nigga fuck it okay push the fucking pack off of the porch or break a pound down get the scrap if it happens to blow it makes a round sounds pussy cat on my lap push it back and go to town down putting rap on my back and I'm black and snatching crowns Money attached emotionally, I get the clutch and if you get too close to me, I'm at the top where I'm supposed to be. Jumping in the gang, niggas act like they coaching me. 400 rats ain't shit, but a shoulder me. I'm on the road and I bet that you're holding me. When I'm in traffic, it's always a pole with me. Pillsbury, man, I keep door with me. Hit from the back, she giving me slurp and I ain't even pull my pants down. Jump in the box and slide to the other side, it's always a man down. Draw down. 
hands in the air, nigga, make one move, get gunned down. Give me that smoke so long, they don't even wanna talk no more, they just run down. No lock doors, I serve with a chop. Bitch got spent, she was hanging with a op. We call him Mickey, talk to the cop. I was on Pine Dale, glass in the sock. Back in the die, I invest in the block. Fast forward, now I'm investing in stock. I put a drum on the heckling and cots. Don't play, cause I'm very invested in shots. Push the fucking pack off of the porch or break a pound down. Get the scrap if it happen to blow, it makes a round sounds. Pussy cat on my lap, push it back and go to town down. Putting rap on my